Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today we're gonna be playing uh, a very skillful deck which I've I've played with a couple of seasons ago. It's gonna be a uh, Digger Mortar deck with pretty much spammy cards and in the first game it looks like we're gonna be playing against Steelbait and against player whose name is Vayne. So he's gonna be opponent for this video. At least for the game number one, and he's gonna be playing actually a four hat variation of the steel weight. So we have this information given to us very early on. He's gonna be also playing a scalp cake, double scalp cake, even. I would even say, I would love this. I would love this bomb girl to help out with the, with the defense, but. By the looks of it, it's not gonna happen. I would love to believe that these phones should take care of this phone, uh, bomb girl, but they won't. So I'm gonna just play swordsman and force out some another uncomfy responses. So we're a bit behind in this matchup because I was trying to get a grasp of what exactly is my opponent playing, and now right now I know exactly each and every card in his deck, so we can pretty much comfortably start to make him plays. I'm gonna play actually Mortar on the opposite side because it's already very tough for him to defend that. He's gonna be defending the Mortar and look at those devils on the right side. That's gonna be a lot of lots of lots of damage and you absolutely love to see it. He probably didn't have Ice Tiny because he is running a mirror variation and he didn't want to spend a bigger spell on that which is absolutely understandable. Of course, given the fact that he is rally, running the big spell at all, because these decks usually don't run the big spell, so he called the uh, good game already. I don't think it's gonna be over yet, but it looks like we are in a very comfortable lead, and now it's our uh, duty to not drop it. I'm gonna play a very safe, very safe uh, rolling steel, uh, not to miss anything. I'm gonna right now play devils. Not the best response against Fonkeg, but uh, it gets the job done. I'm gonna play <coughs> some Digger right now to tank for these doubles. I'm gonna play a Poison on his Fawn Girl, uh, Bomb Girl. For some reason, I'm just calling her Fawn Girl and it's just not working out because it's not her name. That's simple. I'm gonna actually leave the uh, Fawn Keg on the left side because there's no point on in defending that, I'm gonna play Poison here to chip on the tower and uh, defeat the Bomber and he still has to play something for my Swordsman because if he doesn't, okay, it, it actually won't be a hit but I kinda was expecting that it may be a hit. I'm gonna play right now some phones here, I'm gonna this time play Rolling Steel for his phone keg, so keep him guessing whether or not I'm gonna react to that. I'm gonna play some digger here and absolutely get uh, the value on every single card of his with this poison and that's gonna be pretty much already a very good spot which I shouldn't throw in a uh, near future. I'm gonna play swordsman here. He's gonna be going for this plan with a skeleton keg tanking for a phone keg once again. I don't think it's gonna be working out for him very soon. I'm gonna just play digger in the on the inside. I'm gonna play some Poison and that should be the official closing of the game. GG well played, very cool game number one out of vain. He played it very well, but yet it is our deck that comes out on top. So, very cool beginning of the video and let's jump to the game number two. And so right now we're in the game number two against Faxa. He's gonna be having zero medals and so far didn't show any cards, so we might as well just cycle devils and he immediately shows the machine gun. So, as far as I'm concerned, the machine gun isn't the best matchup for us for a very simple reason, uh, mainly because we don't have like a reliable tank, usually as a digger. This time we have swordsman, so it should be uh, better. Also, he's playing bomb blasters and bomb girl. I mean, I kind of expected Cyclone inside the machine gun deck. It's actually at least logical decision because you kind of want to snipe the swordsman like. Uh, pull them away from the machine gun radius and uh, stuff, but I don't know what he's on about uh, with these bomb blasters because it's a very unusual combo that you usually don't see with a machine gun. He's actually pulling my devils out of his tower, which is 
absolutely correct move, but uh, I think a bit too late and my attack just it gets a lot of damage that it really shouldn't ever do, so uh, very cool to see. I'm gonna actually get another beautiful rolling steel, killing everything in its path, except like bomb blasters, but then again, they get one-shotted by the tower. It works out perfectly, trust me on that. I'm gonna right now just go for the uh, digger and some the phones on the opposite side. I'm not gonna protect that mortar because I frankly didn't have the resources to. But I'm gonna just uh, anticipate the steel hammer uh, reaching my tower in the near future and playing some devils on that. Also, these devils will get some nice damage on the tower. So, we're in a very flexible spot right now. We can pretty much uh, both defend till the end of the game or try to get, go for a 3 star. And I think uh, since we have a lot of time, why not go for a 3 star? That's a. That's a. A uh, little mistake on my part. I'm gonna play some falls here to counter both Viking and Bomber. So we're gonna just, like I said, go for a three star. There's no reason why shouldn't we try. At least we will get to know why it is impossible for the future. So we're gonna get some digger and a gunner. That's gonna be a very good damage right here. Unfortunately, the machine gun will connect on our gunner, so that's not gonna be. Too good for us, but at the same time we're gonna get a fabulous poison. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna get a rolling still here, and I think the game is over here because if he doesn't defend this bo uh, gunner, and he doesn't, it's gonna lock on his Viking tower. So that's gonna be a one of the rare scenarios where this deck actually gets a three star. Obviously, all the cycle decks, uh, including this one, usually won't be getting that, but th this time we get it because our opponent was just playing suboptimally. So, yeah, we're gonna be going just for the game number three. And our next opponent will be Bolond 12 Sigo, which uh, I do not approve. Do not smoke cigarettes, it's very bad for your, uh, for your lungs and stuff. Uh, basically, uh, you don't want to uh, have problems uh, with lungs if you don't know uh, what's the what's the matter with my uh, little speech. So he's going to be playing Dark Knight and he already shows the mirror. So mirror is usually a card that you want to kind of hide from your opponent. It you it's usually a gimmick card which you kind of want to abuse in a way where your opponent doesn't expect the card to be mirrored and then you just. Uh, play a second card and absolutely destroy it. Right now I have that knowledge, so I should be absolutely fine. Also, there are only so many gimmicks you can fit into one deck, so if he is banking on some other gimmick, there are chances that uh, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble later on if he wants to pull it off uh, in another manner. So I'm gonna just go for a mortar, bait out some response. I'm gonna actually get a Necromancer here. That's gonna be a second shot on the Necromancer. And here it is. And since this Necromancer is already dead, yeah, I was about to say I'm gonna ignore it, but I cannot ignore the Skeleton Horde rolling steel time it is. And he's gonna actually try to act like it was the part of the plan, like as if he didn't lose uh, 1000 damage on his tower and absolutely all his life savings just to deal to foam hits so that's some interesting decision making for my opponent but allow that uh, i pretty much want to just win this game and even though my opponent is playing suboptimally also these devils were definitely suboptimal uh, it doesn't matter really for me I'm gonna get a ton of damage on the right side and we're gonna double down with a mortar right here. So he's gonna be obviously calculated with the Dark Knight. It was the response that I expected and it absolutely happened. I'm gonna play false to kill the Necromancer. He shouldn't be able to retarget, so everything's fine. I'm gonna play mortar always on the opposite side just to annoy my opponent. I could have just gone uh, on the same side, but at the same time I just want to get uh, more damage and the way to get more damage is basically to split it. Uh, good rule of thumb, if you if your opponent just uh, hard defense one side, it's usually a good idea to hit uh, both sides at once, because th this way it's gonna create a bit of confusion. So right now my opponent is just playing Necromancer, which in on itself is just a pretty weird decision. Uh, I won't be able to get any tower before the 
sudden death overtime, so that's gonna uh, be a bit balls. Uh, using some slang here, uh, I'm gonna obviously defend that. It's gonna be even more annoying, and at this point, I think I just have to finish the game. And these devils are actually putting so much work. I think okay, this this gunner just slipped. He didn't react to that gunner at all, and he definitely should. Had he wanted this game to go for a longer period of time, but he didn't. All right, so that's gonna be the game number three. Let's jump to the game number four. And it looks like we're gonna face a Vayne again, so my guess is that he didn't change the deck and uh, we already see a Fonkex, so it's kinda semi-confirmation that he's still going with the same deck, but we cannot be 100% sure, he may have tweaked a card or two, you never know, uh, I never know, to be frankly honest, I'm gonna play some Fonks on this uh, Bomb Girl, nothing to be especially worried about. I'm gonna react uh, to the swordsman in a pretty sensible manner. Just play phone cake on, on I mean rolling still on this phone cake. Basic stuff, nothing too shabby so far. I'm gonna right now go for digger. I want some damage back and I believe my opponent will go for a bomb girl, which is on itself very surprising move. I'm gonna play some poison just to kill her. I don't want to deal with any shenanigans that involve Bomber. I'm gonna play Mortar here, get one shot if he doesn't block and obviously it blocks so this means after this trade I'm up actually 3 mana ahead which is always very nice to see. After that I think I'm gonna just play my Swordsman who in the pirate is the Scourge. So uh, yeah, some, some little details for you. The swordman should be able to counter these stonefons. Absolutely normal interactions. I'm gonna play some fonts to counter this one. I'm gonna right now pressure this lane with a gunner. I would love to get a prediction of these fonts, and I get it. Very cool to see. Obviously, he will be fast enough to respond to my gunner, but it costed him a lot of mana. For pretty much a mistake he could have avoided. I'm gonna get a cleanup on this phone cake and the mortar will officially connect. I think he's gonna be playing phone hut right now. So I'm gonna just block it. There we go. And that's gonna be already a very good situation for me. I'm gonna play rolling steel here to clean the phone hut. And that's gonna be a lot of damage from this mortar. I think it's gonna get a one more shot. And there we go. I'm gonna split right now, Devils in the back, I'm gonna play Mortar here because it's gonna target the, uh, it's gonna target the Bomb Girl anyway, I'm gonna even get a full cleanup on the Phone Cake this time, which was very fortunate that he didn't go for any gimmicks, I'm go right now gonna go just for Poison, I'm gonna go for Digger, and he cannot play Fonts on this, he, he just can't, because if he does, he's gonna lose them instantly, so that was a very cool sequence from me, I'm gonna play Devils on this Skeleton Keg, I'm gonna play, actually I'm gonna Kai this move here, there's no reason not to, I'm gonna delete this Bomb Girl, try to get some hits, I won't be able to, but it's not too bad for now, actually, he's gonna actually play another Skeleton Keg, so right now I have a full info on his cycle, that's very handy, if I can say so, I'm gonna play Swordsman here, and right now, he, yeah, his, his bomb girl should be locked onto my swordsman, that's everything cool right now, he's gonna go for another, for another, uh, this, uh, uh, cake, which I'm gonna have a nice counter against, like I said, mirror is a gimmick card, but once you figure out what your opponent wants, it's pretty easy to deal with. So I'm gonna just go for it. Uh, last push. It pretty much doesn't uh, really matter at this point because the game is for us in the bag. I'm gonna get a kite on these two skeleton kegs. Very nice. And that's gonna be another win in the pocket for us against a Steel Bay Life set. I actually feel very confident against Steel Bait with this uh, particular deck because. Uh, first of all, they cannot spell cycle you, 
uh, because you have digger. And second of all, even if they uh, refuse to use like poison or missile, whatever big spell they're using, and go for like uh, cheesy uh, baity style, like you've seen in uh, right in this video. Uh, you can have more than enough tools to deal with them and pretty much counter push with them even. Also the uh, bomb girl isn't that big of a problem because you can always just sacrifice one hit on your tower, play a troop and then they have to just overspend on it. So yeah, that's gonna be a brief explanation how to play this matchup and we're gonna go for the game number 5 of this video. And in the last game of today's video we're gonna be facing Lucas who has zero medals. Starts with a mother skeleton, which is already a sign that he has to be for sure a very good player and at least know how to play his cards. So I'm gonna just go for poison here. There's no reason not to. He was just very aggressive right here. I'm gonna sacrifice one hit from the bomb girl play phones afterwards and we should be able to get away with a very cheesy defense right here because he pretty much stacked every single troop that he had in one spot it was a perfect opportunity to play my poison i'm gonna just go for a digger plus devil's attack he's gonna respond with mother skeleton so he's gonna get a nice value against my troops but not before they got a sufficient damage to kinda excuse their value and right now i'm gonna just go for a gunner no reason not to he should he shouldn't go in with his previous combo because he pr pretty much uh, saw how it did it end uh, out also not like to just destroy this man's hopes and dreams yet again so yeah he didn't go for the devil heart he will go for it now which even on itself is a surprising move, I kinda expected him to learn from his mistakes. Right now we're gonna just get a very nice kite with defense, I think I'm gonna just let these devils go, because I want to save mana, I can even counter them, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just let them go, not a biggie, we kinda evenly split damage between two towers, I'm gonna go for a rolling steel here. Because why not? He's gonna lose everything he owns here. I think I'm gonna just receive one hit and there we go. And right now I'm very tempted to predict his mother skeleton and yeah, I'm... Okay, I didn't predict his mother skeleton, but the devil heart is a devil heart. I would say not a good trade on paper because it's plus two for him, but on the other hand, we're winning so hard that we can afford these trades. I'm gonna play Digger. Uh, furthermore, I'm gonna play a Gunner right here. There's no reason not to end that. Now he's gonna be playing Viking. So basically, I would be kinda scared of the Viking with a Mother Skeleton, but since he's not playing Mother Skeleton at all because he just uh, used her, uh, it's gonna be a very, very nice cleanup. So he's gonna be playing Devil Horde actually, which I think uh, is very correct move in this position. He's just uh, right now playing kinda on my momentum, trying to get anything from this position. I don't think he's able to break through though because my cards are just very solid on defense and right now I think I'm gonna just close the game, play the digger, play the poison and yeah that, that's gonna be just GG well played. Uh, the last game of the video, like I've said, deck that takes a lot of skill but once you get a grasp of it you can pretty much outplay any opponent unless they have like a hard counter. There's no deck in this world without a hard counter, but this deck pretty much very versatile. I definitely recommend it to play on ladder and your uh, only weak matchup, I would say, in this meta. I don't think he, this deck has a weak matchup like uh, in general, but I think uh, if you were to face like a... Uh, I actually don't know. I actually don't know what's the weak matchup of this card. Maybe, yeah, uh, first of all, Machine Gun. Like, Machine Gun always scores good against Digger, even though you have Swordsman. And second bad matchup, I would say, is... Uh, I'm not even sure. Like, this deck has a lot of 50-50s and... Uh, uh, not many good matchups, but then it doesn't have bad matchups except like machine guns. So yeah, that's gonna be it from me in today's video. Hope you guys enjoy and watch till the end of the video because if you didn't, 
you won't be hearing me just blabbling at the end of the video. So yeah, if you enjoyed, make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because I post the Boom Arena content every single day along with shorts. Definitely check them out if you aren't already. And yeah, that's going to be it from me today. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.